Hi everyone. So um, today we are doing something slightly different and I am going to interview mum and just ask her a series of questions to get her views on um, a number of different things around eating disorders and um, what it was like at the time and um, what, what she's kind of seen differently now. So this is part one of our kind of mini interview series so in in our um video that will follow this mum will be interviewing me as well so are you ready mum i think so a little um nervous <laughs> <laughs> okay so question one what was it like being a parent to someone with an eating disorder first word that comes to my mind was terrifying um I had suspected for so long that you had an eating disorder, but I was too frightened to even allow myself to go there. Um, and, you know, we've shared, we've shared what happened next before, so I won't go into details of that now, but I literally, in fact, I've got a stomach, my stomach has just lurched now, remembering back to what it was like, because I was, I felt completely out of my depth, um, nothing like this had cropped up in, not in our life, in anybody in our family, in my friendship groups. So this was an absolute first. It was kind of, it happened to other people and, and, and to have it literally just burst through our door, because that's what it felt like, um, just winded me, I think. Because even though I say, you know, I was frightened and it terrified me, I had to get on and do it. I had to be practical as well, as well as be mum and be wife and, uh, and, and all of that. So I literally had to, I had to step up in a way because I had no other choice. I couldn't sink into my panic and my fear and my potential, you know, uh, depression, because I, 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 I was living this with you and, and I had to lead. I had to, um, I had to kind of almost know what I was doing without knowing what I was doing and being frightened and being hopeful and trying to be positive and holding everyone together as well because your brothers and, and dad and the wider family were all struggling as well with this and trying to help but not being able to and their frustrations coming out and me having to deal with that as well. Um, and I know in hindsight what I wasn't doing was looking after myself. And that's something that I would urge others in that situation to do. Mm. Um, and, and, and just, I guess, to know as well that why would we know what to do? Because we've never had to do anything like this before. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no Question tears two. yet. Sorry? No tears yet. No. Um, so question two, what was going through your mind when I just refused to eat? Mm. Do you know, do you know what's just come to mind, which is totally random, you know, like a kaleidoscope that you used to look to look through when you were a, a child and the pattern changed all the time, however you moved the thing. A kaleidoscope of emotions is what I guess I was feeling in any one moment, and it was literally changing all the time, a carousel um, of anger, of frustration, of fear, of, of, and that, all of that towards you and also towards myself. I had no control, and that felt so hard because, you know, as, as a parent of small children, 
you know, most of the time you tell them to do something and they'll do it or they'll not do it, but then you'll kind of, you know, eventually you'll get them to do what you want them to do. And with this, it was like, I had, I had no control at all because you were, you were overtaken in those moments by a demon and there was no way of being rational, being bossy, being forceful, being loving and being kind. Uh, whatever way I tried to make you eat, you had an answer or rather the eating disorder had an answer. So I felt, I used to dread mealtime so much because it, it would always be a battle. There was always a battle and, and it was me and you, and we've said this before, it was me and you because the boys, um, and I include dad in that, was silence, was silent dealing with whatever was going on for them. And I found it unbelievably difficult in those moments where you were negotiating every single thing. Everything was a negotiation. And having you stand literally here, observing me, criticizing, judging, I, I just felt ill so much of the time and then and then utterly spent afterwards um and, at, and and the times that you were at school i was grateful that you were there and and that somebody else was having to deal with that and not me yeah and what what was it that helped you to get through it a doggedness, I think, within me that I had to, because what choice did I have? I had to pick myself up and carry on and get through it how, in whatever way I could, um, because there was no other choice. Because what, what was I going to do? Just let you do what you wanted to do, which would have been to starve yourself. And I didn't even want to think where that would end up. So I had to do everything within my power. And, and in a way it was almost like there were, mo there were days where it was like, if you just ate an apple, you ate an apple. Um, but I think, I don't know, there was, there was something within me that that just had to keep that light alive in my head that this, you know, this too will pass. Um, and maybe, maybe there were times that I was naive, but maybe it was just that allowing myself to not, not, not literally cover myself in it the whole time, if that makes sense, just to, just to give myself a little moment of freedom of, oh, it'll be okay. Yep. Yeah. Well done, you're doing well. <laughs> Next question. Um, what would you have done differently if we could relive the whole thing? Mm. It's to share what we're sharing with with the people that we're working with now, just to sit with you and help and keep pointing, keep pointing, even though you probably wouldn't have heard it at the time, that our experience is created 100% of the time in our thoughts. And that what we are trying to do is to fix a feeling and and we will do that in any way that makes sense to us. And for you, that was restricting. And, and if I had known that at the time, that, that this was your coping strategy, then maybe I could have sat with you and helped explain what was going on. 
So, um, you know, as we talk about pointing upstream rather than, you know, weighing out the ingredients kind of thing, the detail, if that makes sense. And what difference would that have made to you as a carer? Um, it would have, well, well, I guess what it, what the, the other thing to add into that, of course, which is the key bit here is seeing that you weren't your eating disorder, that behind it, you were perfectly healthy, mentally healthy. And if I had seen that, and you know what though, B, there were glimpses. I knew that anyway, without having this language for it, because there were, there were moments that it wasn't all consuming for us. And those glimpses of you behind that, if I'd seen that that was the, no, that was who you were rather than the, the, the noise and the chaos of the eating disorder. So knowing that would have allowed me as, to move my shoulders from up here to down there. And I think me seeing your health would have helped you maybe see it in yourself. Yeah. I think that I think that's that feels to me like a really important thing is that mm -hmm. if I'd seen your health, then maybe you could have seen that. And I think maybe you know at times it's like one of the things that I talk to other carers about is the importance of self care and it's looking after yourself because somehow that gives the person you're caring for permission to look after themselves in a way. So it's seeing beyond or behind the eating disorder to who they really are. Yeah. And then it would have felt so much less stressful. Okay, last question. What advice would you offer to people caring for someone with an eating disorder now? Oh, be gentle with yourself. Because this is the toughest thing that you'll be going through. This is so incredibly tough that you're not prepared for. You, you're not schooled in how to do this. And we're all doing the best we can. And if you as a carer can see that in yourself that you're doing the best that you can and to see it that they're doing the best that they can i think just knowing that it's like getting off your own back giving yourself permission to appreciate that that, that you're, you're doing your best that To, yeah, to, get, to, to love yourself, I think. Because it starts there. And, and I think that that is a piece of advice which, you know, it, people might be expecting, you know, a, a kind of the golden answer, as it were. But I think it's being, it's absolutely being kind to yourself and seeing who they are as well. See beyond the, the, the behavior, see beyond that. You know, it's like Dr. Bill Pettit, an amazing psychiatrist talks about, talk to the person behind the mask. And at some point the person behind the mask will speak up. And some days that's going to be easier than other days. Some days it's going to be impossible. But actually, I guess those two, if I, if I can give two pieces of advice, it would be that. Be kind to yourself and see beyond the mask. Wise words. Thank you, Mum. Um, so that concludes our Paxman style interview. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, so we, the next video we'll be doing will be um, Mum Grilling Me, so look out for that one. And um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, we've got loads of videos on there ranging a whole load of different topics. Um, so check out the um, other videos too, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>